Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tom with TK Designs and today I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a grid pattern on your Shapeoko 5 Pro spoil board. I'll demonstrate on the Shapeoko 5 Pro 2x4 foot CNC, but the te technique can easily be applied to the 4x4 machine or even other non Shapeoko CNC machines. Before we get started, please take a moment to smash that subscribe button and enable notifications. You will really be helping the channel out. My spoil board in total is 1205 millimeters on the X axis and 635 millimeters on the Y axis. I want to make approximately 25 millimeter grid lines. I'm going to start by creating my project as a size of 1205 millimeters on the X, but for the Y, I'm going to set it to 584 millimeters, which is about 50 millimeters shy of the full capabilities of the machine. I'm doing this because my Y axis as a limitation does not come forward far enough to reach the front left hand corner of the machine. But we'll go ahead and create that. And then we're going to start our grid lines. I'm going to start by doing a polyline started at the lower left hand corner. And we're going to run that to the lower right hand corner. So start in the upward direction and I want to do 25 millimeter spacing. So I'm going to press 25 and then enter and that'll make our next point can drag this all the way back over to the left. And we'll go ahead and left click, start in the upward direction, type in 25 and enter again, and then right click. And that gives us our horizontal vector. Next, I'm going to use the array copy tool. And we're going to say about 20, well, we'll go with 20 rows with no spacing. And obviously that goes out beyond the length of our spoil board. So we're going to come down here and we're going to remove all of the lines that extend too far. I'm going to go ahead and take this last line and I'm going to use the node editing tool and drag our node into the boundary of our spoil board. Okay, now that we've done that, I will go ahead and highlight all of these vectors and I'm going to join those vectors so that they create a singular vector for our tool carve. Okay, so now that that's done, we can take that vector and we'll move it out of the way for the time being. And let's create our horizontal vectors. So again, using the polyline tool, I'm going to start in the lower left hand corner, go all the way up to the top, come to the right 25 millimeters by typing 25 and enter and drag it all the way back down to the bottom. Left click, go to the right, type in 25 and enter again and right click to create our vector. And again, we're going to use the array copy tool. This time we're going to go Thirty columns and a singular row. And let's let's move these out of the way a little bit first, because we don't want to overlap. Go back and highlight our vector. Thirty columns, one row, zero gap. Go ahead and say copy. And again, as you see, it extends past the spoil board. So we're going to take 
the vectors that go outside the bounds of our spoil board and highlight them. And in this case, our final vector is inside the boundary, so we're okay. So now we'll highlight everything again, and we'll join the vector to create a single vector. Now we can go ahead and create a tool path. We'll get this first one. I'm gonna use a profile tool path. I'm gonna go 1.5 millimeters deep on the line, and I am using a four flute 60 degree V bit that's one quarter of an inch in diameter. I'm gonna go ahead and call this the vertical tool path. We'll go ahead and calculate that out. And if we run the tool path, we see that we have our vertical lines. We can go ahead and close that. Go back to our 2D view. Highlight our horizontal tool path and press F9 to center those. Now we're going to do another profile tool path, one and a half millimeters deep on the line. This time we're going to call it horizontal. Calculate that out. And we run the tool path. We'll see we now have our grid lines the entire size of the spoil board. We can go ahead and close that out, highlight both of our tool paths. I like to go the horizontal first, so I'm gonna rearrange those. Do the horizontal first, then the vertical. And we'll export those as a single file. I'm going to use uh, Gerbil millimeters because I'm going to have to disable the bit setter in order to run this tool path properly. We'll go ahead and save the tool path. Call it spoil board grid. And we are now ready to go to the CNC machine and cut the file. As you can see, creating a grid is a fairly simple to do. Do make sure you take precautions when you make the cut. Remove the bit setter and choose the plain Gerbil post processor to ensure that the bit setter processes are not performed. Also make sure that you turn off the bit setter in the machine setup. Thanks for watching and don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button and give me your thoughts in the comments below. Here's a couple of other videos I think you'll like. See you again soon.